Thank you for listening to Life Improvement Radio. You are listening to a rebroadcast of a previously recorded show. All right, oh, we're, we continue to have amazing guests for this hour. And I tell you, Sydney is really lucky. And this, Cindy's really lucky. That and is the truth. To get to talk to these people and, and hopefully in plug her show as well. So I'm excited to welcome the program uh, Lucinda Franks. She's the author of a memoir, My Father's Secret War. And you are a former staff writer for the New York Times, and you, you're an award-winning uh, author. How are you? And uh, thanks for stopping by, Lucinda. I'm, I'm great. My new book is called Timeless, Love, Morgenthau, and Me. And uh, that's what I'm going to be presenting at the book fair. Uh, it's an intimate story of the marriage between myself, who I won, was the youngest woman to win the Pulitzer Prize, and my husband, Robert Morgenthau, um, the district attorney of New York uh, for 30 years and called the DA of the world for his international white-collar uh, crime innovations. Uh, and it's a, a, a kind of a hybrid of some of his, the backstory of some of his cases and uh, the foibles and weaknesses of each of us uh, in the 30 years that separated us uh, in marriage. And we've been married for 37 years. <laughs> you know, and, and that's great to look at two successful people and how they're able to make things work in so many ways and, and doing different things and, and managing that relationship while you guys are being very successful, have very successful careers. And I think you wanted to really highlight that, didn't you? Yes. You know, we, we really helped each other. I think it was really important that we both, I, I had a, a, a life that I came into the marriage with, a career, successful career, rising career. Bob was rising in his uh, career, and uh, we helped each other. I, I couldn't write for the first uh, two years of our marriage. For some reason, it was writer's block, and my husband said, hey, I'm sick of you not writing. I want to see your byline on the front page of the New York Times. That's why I married you. It's a little joke. And uh, so he, uh, he uh, uh, bought me two plane tickets and said, you're going to Northern Ireland. There's a great story out there about the peace women, the Protestant and the Catholic, who've gotten together to make peace in Northern Ireland. And so I went, and it broke my writer's block. Uh, I helped him with a lot of cases uh, that, that he was struggling over also. <laughs> that's, that's, that's quite interesting how a couple works together, as my wife is right now managing the children as I'm broadcasting live in my office <laughs> studio and, and dealing with things. And then she, as she teaches, I'll be doing things as an entrepreneur and owning a tutoring consulting company to help in that process for us to be. And we did co-host some radio together when we first started in the... Uh, you, you got to have that relationship. Isn't that true, for sure? Yes, definitely. To make all those things work, for sure. All right, um, uh, so continuing thinking about this and being in Miami uh, and sharing the story and your success of your other things, do you want other couples to understand that they need to work together and, 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 and work together as a team to have success? I think that's one of the things you're well, having a message. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's... It's not necessary that uh, one person has a career and the other person doesn't. I don't think that's what's important. But I think what's important is you have an intertwining of minds and uh, an involvement in each other's lives. Uh, and, you know, if it's a long marriage and a, and a loving marriage, uh, it will have ups and downs. And, you know, the divorce rate is horrific in in the United States, so uh, I think it's important not to throw in the towel when you have a bad year or a bad two years, uh, and I don't think you should work at the marriage, as the old saw goes. I think you have to reinvent your marriage, uh, go on a trip, meet a third person who will mirror uh, what you both were and how you bo both looked and acted when you fell in love. Uh, there are all sorts of ways you can do that. And then you begin looking at each other differently, not in the old uh, 
Uh, oh, this is my husband. This is my wife. Ho hum way. I have a question for you, Lucinda, if I could. Um, what is the impact uh, of social activism on a relationship? And does um, the, the radical aspect of social activism have a half-life? <laughs> well, you, you put your finger right on it. When we married, uh, the outroar, uproar, uproar was as though the Pope had asked Squeaky Frome for her hand in marriage. I mean, people just thought this was ridiculous. Not only was there 30 years between us, but I was a radical hippie who had poured blood on draft files, and, you know, I should have been incarcerated uh, from the things I did. Uh, and, of course, Bob was the one that could have put me in jail, and instead he asked me out on a date. Amazing. So uh, it was... Uh, it was quite a beginning uh, because he was establishment and I was anti-establishment. Now, how we made it, I don't know, but I, it was the, the war ended, and that was a, a big, uh, a big thing that that damped down the the passions of the radical movement. Uh, but also, I watched Bob move very subtly and slyly through the system and uh, uh, get things done, like wipe out the death penalty in New York, you know, by a subtle and uh, uh, indirect way. He didn't have to shout and protest because he knew how to work the system and he knew how to get behind the system so that he could change it. Amazing. That's fascinating. What about the half-life part? How does how does radicalism um, evolve and change? You know, as as you get older. You know, as I said, the the war ended, and the war was so important. There was an ethos of death that uh, hung over my generation. Uh, you know, during the war, and even during after the war, when we were bombing Cambodia, two million mm-hmm. uh, tons of bombs. Uh, It it was, we were all outraged, and I retained this radicalism for about uh, two years, three years after I got married, and Bob, who's a very laissez-faire person, you know, just smiled and and let let me do what I wanted to do as long as I didn't, you know, get thrown in jail, which I almost did, Uh, but, uh, you know, it it just... uh, uh, it, it just petered out like like the the whole movement did, and it was uh, it was the most incredible time to live. Uh, you know the the anti war movement was exhilarating. It was angry. It was all the panoply of feelings you want to have in your youth. You had, and I, I got older. You know the war ended. My husband, you know, was an example to me. So, you know, it it began to began to dissipate. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And what do you think in growing together in a marriage made it work at times, especially when things became hard at times, especially in your careers and a lot of times you're so focused on what you're doing that other things can get in the way. How do you make that work? Well, it's very complex. I mean, you can get, I can get so involved in a, in a story, a news story or a book that I'm doing, that if, if I had a very aggressive husband, it would really be a problem. I'd have to negotiate um, a lot. But Bob just lets me do what I want, and I let him do what he wants. But, you know, we're always advising each other. And, you know, we, we have a, a bond, you know, that, that is very strong. And, you know, sometimes it, it, it frays, um, and uh, I will uh, uh, do something like, you know, sneak around the back of, you know, him and rub his back and say, I love you. And, you know, all the tension, you know, will, will dissolve, and I'll make an effort to... Uh, you know, rekindle that love. Uh, I think it's, often it's the woman that has to do that 
the men are too concrete to imagine doing that. Interesting. Interesting that you bring that up, and, and I'm sure your thoughts back in uh, another time, you might have not said that, but that's true growth and understanding <laughs> and love, and I don't know if you said that 20, 25 years ago for sure in some ways. We all grow in so many ways, and we learn what works and how we can make it work well, so it's a give and take uh, for sure as well. So, Lucinda, where can we purchase your book and learn more about you? Where can we go? Well, you can go to uh, Amazon, I, I, you know, I have to say that, uh, and barnesandnoble.com, uh, bookpassage.com, uh, any bookstore. Um, if it, it came out uh, just two years ago. No, no, just a year ago. So it's still on the, on the stands in the bookstores. Uh, so just about any place. And, you know, if you can't find it, just go online. All right, well, best of luck to you, and continue to enjoy your time in Miami uh, with the book fair and, and your in your panel discussion and all those things, and thanks again for calling. Thank you so much, Lucinda. Well, thank you so much. All right, take care. You're listening okay. to Author's Corner on Life Improvement Radio, powered by Life Improvement Radio and uh, Soul Education Network, and we'll be back in just a moment. Thank you for listening to Life Improvement Radio. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own and shall not be construed in any way as advice from Life Improvement Radio. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our website. Personal perspectives expressed by the producers, writers, or editors will always be presented as such. Any rebroadcast or retransmission without the expressed written consent of Life Improvement Radio is strictly prohibited. Thanks for listening.